This is Kitui County, Eastern Kenya. Here, surface water evaporates within days in 35 degrees Celsius heat. Traditional reservoirs lose 60% of their capacity to the sun. But this concrete wall, full of sand, stores 2 million liters underground with zero evaporation. How can a dam that looks broken outperform a reservoir that costs 10 times more? The defining constraint here isn't just heat, it's timing. Rainfall arrives in just two violent months per year. Torrential storms transform bone-dry riverbeds into flash floods, carrying water and thousands of tons of coarse sand downstream. Then, nothing. For 10 months, the rivers vanish completely. This creates a brutal bottleneck. You have a 60-day window to capture enough water for 300 days of drought. Traditional infrastructure can't handle this pattern. Surface reservoirs can't fill fast enough during flash floods. Wells often hit saline water or fail to reach usable aquifers. The solution requires capturing not just water, but the sand that flows with it during those brief floods. When the rains finally come, water and sand flow downstream together in violent flash floods. A concrete wall, typically two to four meters high, traps both. In a traditional dam, sand accumulation is catastrophic, but sand dams are engineered to do exactly this. The wall is deliberately low, calibrated to maximize sand capture over three to five rainy seasons. Over one to 10 rainy seasons, the area behind the dam fills entirely with sand, not silt, not mud, coarse sand. Here's the trick. Water fills the void space between sand grains. Sand has a porosity of 35 to 40 percent, meaning that for every cubic meter of sand, 350 to 400 liters is actually water. A typical sand dam can store 2,000 to 5,000 cubic meters of water. That's millions of liters hidden underground. To extract it, communities dig shallow wells or install hand pumps directly into the sand. The sand acts as a natural filter, removing sediment and preventing mosquito breeding. The structure that looks broken is actually storing water where the sun can't reach it. But sand dams don't work everywhere. They're geographically constrained in ways that make them harder to scale than they first appear. Critical constraint number one, the dam must be built on impermeable bedrock. If water can seep through the riverbed underneath, the entire system fails. Geology matters. Granite catchments produce coarse sand, perfect for storage. Shale catchments produce fine clay that clogs the pores and destroys porosity. Build in the wrong spot and you just erected an expensive concrete monument to failure. And the failure rate is real. A 2020 study in Katui County surveyed 116 sand dams and found that about half were not functional. They were built in locations with unfavorable geology, insufficient rainfall, or unstable riverbeds. Finding the right site requires geological surveys hydrological expertise, and community knowledge of seasonal flow patterns. You can't just build anywhere. The community investment is substantial. A typical sand dam with an adjacent well costs approximately $9,000 USD. Communities provide labor, sand, rocks, and locally available materials, often contributing 30 to 35% of the total cost in the form of sweat equity. If the site is wrong, that investment is wasted. Water never accumulates. The dam becomes a scar on the landscape. But when the geology is right, when bedrock is accessible, when sand is coarse, when the river gradient is between 0.2 and 4%, something remarkable happens. When the geology cooperates, scale follows. Over 1,500 sand dams have been built in this region since the mid-1990s, now serving an estimated 100,000 families with year-round water access. This isn't a pilot project. It's invisible infrastructure at scale. Pan east to Zimbabwe. In the Shashi catchment, researchers accessed 20 sand dams across 19 villages. Result? Water was available for an average of 4.4 additional months per year. In a region where rivers flow just days annually, those extra months mean survival. The technology is spreading across at least nine African countries, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Madagascar, Ethiopia, 
Tanzania, Somalia, Mozambique, and Eswatini. This technology isn't entirely new. Japan, Brazil, and the southwestern United States have used subsurface sand storage for decades. But Kenya is building the aquifer itself, one grain of sand at a time. Each dam serves 210 to 350 people on average and has a projected lifespan of 50 years with minimal maintenance. But here's the bottleneck. Only a fraction of potential sites have been developed. The Shashi catchment alone has an identified storage capacity potential of 4,660 million cubic meters. Currently, sand dams account for just 0.13 million cubic meters of that potential. Why sand dams instead of alternatives? Traditional surface dams create standing water that encourages mosquito breeding and malaria. They require large areas of land, are costly to build, and often damage local ecosystems. In flash flood regions, they can't capture water fast enough during brief, intense storms. Boreholes and deep wells are expensive to drill and operate, need constant energy for pumping, and often fail because usable aquifers are absent or too deep. In places like this, many boreholes produce saline water, making them unreliable for drinking. Water trucking is only a short-term fix. It becomes financially unsustainable over time and distance, and communities still spend four to six hours daily fetching water, keeping them from dependent and vulnerable. Sand dams occupy a middle ground. They're more expensive than rainwater harvesting tanks, but cheaper than boreholes. They require more technical expertise than household solutions, but less infrastructure than centralized water systems. Critically, they work with geography instead of against it. They capture water during the brief window when it's abundant and store it underground during the long window when it's scarce. The scaling question, can invisible infrastructure scale faster than the drought? Climate change is making eastern Kenya drier. Rainfall is becoming more erratic. Droughts are lasting longer. Over 100 sand dams are being built every year in Kenya's southeastern counties but thousands of suitable sites remained undeveloped. The bottleneck is training engineers and geologists who can identify proper sites. The dam that looks broken is filtering and storing water underground where heat can't touch it. The infrastructure that works best is the infrastructure you can't see. Water hidden in sand. Aquifers built one flood at a time. As East Africa faces hotter, drier decades ahead, the question isn't whether sand dams work, the question is whether we can train people fast enough to build them before the next drought arrives. So if this works so well in eastern Kenya, what other broken solutions are we overlooking because they don't look like infrastructure should look? If you want to see more stories about how geography shapes the world in unexpected ways, subscribe to TrueGeo and hit that notification bell. Thank you for watching it, and see you in the next one.